These are some examples of asymptotic bias using the second alternative definition in the book. And the goal here is not to develop all the technical details, but just to get some sense of what this word asymptotic refers to, this type of approximation. So first imagine we have an estimator theta hat n that's trying to estimate a population parameter theta and the mean of the sampling distribution of theta hat n is so if it were equal to theta it would be unbiased but in this case, it's equal to theta plus 1 over n. So that means it has a positive bias or upward bias. If we remember the definition, it's the mean of the estimator minus the true value, which here is 1 over n. So for any n, uh, remember n is the sample size, so it's a positive number. Therefore, 1 over n is also a strictly positive number. So we have a positive bias. And the idea with asymptotic bias or asymptotics in general is we're trying to get an approximation of this true finite sample property. And in particular, we're thinking about an approximation that will be good with larger sample sizes. So in this case, if we think about, you know, as n is increasing, and here's 1, 1, so if n is 1, 1 over n is 1. If n is 2, it drops to 1 half. If n is 3, it goes down to 1 third. And it keeps sort of going down. So it never gets to 0, but it gets closer and closer and closer to 0. So if we have an n you know, somewhere out here, then that 1 over n is very, very close to 0. So we can see this part, the bias, is sort of close to 0 if we have a large sample size n. So that's the sense in which we would say the bias here is uh, asymptotically zero, or it's uh, the estimator is asymptotically unbiased using that second definition, uh, because when n is large, the bias is approximately zero. Now, this doesn't mean anything about... <laughs> what happens when n is small, right? We could have even replaced the 1 over n with 1,000 over n, and then if n is equal to 1, the bias would be 1,000. Um, you know, we can make it as big as we want when n is small. Uh, so that's just something to be careful about. These are approximations that um, get better if you have a larger n, but are not necessarily even close to being good with smaller n. As another example, make it a little more complex and different. Imagine an estimator. So here's our first example. Uh, second example, imagine the mean of the sampling distribution of theta hat is 
0.5 plus 1 over n, all that times the true theta. Now in this case, we might be tempted to think, oh, well, yeah, if n is large, then nothing is ever biased. But in this case, even though this 1 over n term, we can say, well, if n is large, that's approximately 0, large n. Then if we just plug in 0 there, you can see we would get 0.5 theta, so we would still have this attenuation bias even with large n. Or in other words, this estimator not only has finite sample bias, but is also asymptotically biased towards zero.